Hello, this is my friend Jeremy, and we're doing a movie review, and the movie we want to review is the 1958 science fiction horror classic, The Fly, which I have both on VHS and on DVD. Now, The Fly was directed by Kurt Newman, who prior to this directed several Tarzan movies, and the film was written by James Clavell, who would actually go on to co-write The Great Escape, and he would go on to write and direct To Serve With Love. And the movie is based on a short story of the same name by George Langelin, which was actually published in Playboy magazine in 1957. Now, I have read the short story, and the movie is actually pretty true to the original story. The big difference is the story has a much bleaker ending, whereas the movie has a slightly happier ending. Now, George Langelin was actually kind of an interesting character in his own right. During World War II, he was actually a spy for the Allied forces, and he underwent radical plastic surgery, completely altering his appearance, and something tells me he might have taken a little bit of his real life and injected it into his stories, at least the whole thing of him altering his own body. Something tells me that might have been a little bit of an influence on The Fly. So, uh, what do you think of The Fly? Oh, I really like it. I think it's a classic creature feature. The plot is very engaging. The acting is very good. Oh, definitely. And, you know, any movie with Vincent Price, I can always watch. You know, he's just a, he's a horror legend. Oh, definitely. And what I like about this movie is, at first glance, it seems like it's your typical B-movie, but if you actually watch the film, it's a little bit more than that. It's a much more well-made film than a lot of the B-movies that were coming out around the time, and it almost plays out more like a mystery film in a lot of ways, and almost more of a drama and a love story in a way. It's almost more of a love story that has horror elements. So what the plot of The Fly is it begins where this woman murders her husband and then tells her brother-in-law about it and the police get involved and they start investigating into this and while she murdered her husband, she claims that it wasn't murder even though what she admits to doing it and she ends up telling them this story about her, how her husband was working on a teleportation device, a device that could actually transport matter from one area to another, and he ended up testing it on himself, but unbeknownst to him, a fly ended up getting into the machine with him, and their atoms got scrambled, and he came out as a half-human, half-fly-like creature, whereas the fly basically came out as a fly with a human head, and ultimately, according to her, she had to murder him in the end, and that's the basic plot of the fly, uh... I mean, obviously, saying that she murdered him is kind of a spoiler, but it's right in the beginning yeah. of the film where that happens. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's at the beginning of the film, and then it's through the flashback that she tells to Vincent Price's character and also the... Uh, the detective. The detective, uh, you know, it's revealed what led her to do it. So in the film, you have Al Hedison, who would later go by David Hedison as the character of Andre... How do you pronounce his last name? I think it's Delambre. Yeah, I think, I think you're saying it right, and he's the man who would end up becoming the fly in the movie, and he gives a really good performance, oh, I would yeah. say. Uh, he's really good, like, when he's a human, and he's also really good when he yeah. becomes the fly, yeah. because even under that makeup, he still conveys a lot of emotion. Yeah. Well, it wasn't really makeup, I think and it was more was of a mask. mask. Yeah. Uh, and I have to say, the mask was really well done. Oh yeah, there's a lot of detail to it. They actually, they really worked hard to kind of replicate a fly's head, only, you know, make it bigger. And, you know, David Hedison really, uh, you know, as a human, he's very likable, he's very friendly, very loving to his family, and as the fly, you know, every time he kind of moves, you see him kind of straining, you know, struggling. And I think he pulls that off very well. Yeah, because you very much get the idea that his human consciousness is starting to die. Yeah. Like, he's starting to... His animal instinct is starting to take over. Yeah, I think he gives a perfect tragic performance, you know, especially when he does become the fly, and as I said before, you see him sort of straining against his fly-like instincts, you know. He grab, grabs his own hand and just is struggling not to do something horrible, you know. Uh, oh, and one thing I also want to mention is something that always gets me in the movie is you know, whenever his wife brings him his food, you know, he has to kind of 
hover over it and the the uh, thing that's on his head, you know, prevents us from seeing it, but you hear this horrible sound underneath and you know, you don't you think he's like sucking it up and liquefying it. It's just it's horrible. I, that sound is just so yeah, the movie is a true body horror film, yeah. I would say. I know you didn't meet David Hedison, but didn't you say you ordered like an autograph yeah, from him, though? I, I ordered a signed photo from his website, uh, I think shortly before he passed away. We also have Patricia Owens as his wife. Helene, I think is how she says her name. I think so. I'm not, I don't really remember, to be honest. She was really good in the movie as well. Yeah, she was great. She, uh, I think you could say she provided the emotional center of it, the whole thing. You also have the great Vincent Price as Andre's brother, Francois. I really loved Vincent Price in this movie because you could tell right up front that he always had a thing for Helene. I really like the scene where the detective says to him, you loved her, didn't you? And he's like, yes. He just says flat out, yes, I loved her, but she loved my brother. He's always great to watch. He just has this great presence about him and, you know, he's got that iconic voice. He's just, he's great. I, I'm happy to uh, own a photo signed by him in my collection, which I cherish to this very day. I mean, I can just watch any movie that he's in. He just, he has that kind of uh, pull, shall we say. I and you really do feel his, even though you could tell Vincent Price's character doesn't really believe the story that Helene tells, he's still desperate for it to be true because... This is a woman he really does love, and not only did she kill her husband, his brother, she's going to go away to a psychiatric hospital for the rest of her life, potentially. So you really do feel this this guy's pain. Uh, I think he realizes the fact that, yeah, they're not. if she did go to the psychiatric hospital, they are not going to treat her well there. I mean, this was... I mean, I don't think they're a good place to be now, but this was back in the 50s. You also have Charles Herbert as Philippe, the son of Andre and Helene, and Francois' nephew. Yeah, he's... I think he does all right. Yeah, he's all right. You know, he's kind of the stereotypical what you think of when you think of a kid in movies. Like, he... You can tell he's acting. I actually met Charles Herbert. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, it was actually back in... all the way back in 2010 at Monster Mania at their Maryland show and uh, you know he was very nice he had a few interesting tidbits to tell me he uh, I asked him what working with Vincent Price was like he said oh it was great you know a lot of big stars at the time didn't like working with kids but he was an exception he seemed to like working with kids and uh, about the uh, famous help me scene you know that became so famous that uh, for a while people not people he knew, just random people everywhere, whatever they'd see him, would start going, Help me! Help me! To him. <laughs> and uh, he said it, they, it got so bad that eventually he just got so annoyed with it. And I think we remember him telling me an instance where someone actually was trying to get him to help them, but he thought that they were just joking. <laughs> oh, God. And uh, then he had to explain to that person the whole story of the movie, and I... Yeah, I, he was a very nice guy. I got a photo with him and got a, one of his signed photos from his table of him with Vincent Price. And now, what do you think of Herbert Marshall as the detective? I think he's pretty good. You know, he's. I think he shows some sympathy for uh, Helen, Helene. You know, he's sympathetic, but also I think firm in that he has a job to do and he's yeah. gonna do it whether they like it or not. Now, before we discuss this movie further, I just want to cut to a short review on this film done by our friend John. What saddens me about the original Fly movie? It is dismissed by modern-day audiences thinking that as a cheesy sci-fi B movie. The film has a lot more to offer, and it is far from being a cheesy B movie. It's a very sad and emotional film when you think about it, because The Fly is about a scientist who neglects his family, and we see how his work has taken over his life. This movie is another example of how science can fail. The Fly Mass is very cool and awesome, very well done realistic look for its time. When his wife unmasses him, it's like the fan of the opera when Christina unmasses Eric to see what he looks like. I'll admit when I first saw this movie and saw Vincent Price on the poster, I thought he was going to be the fly monster. It's very rare to see Vincent Price being the good guy in his movies. No matter what Vincent Price plays in horror movies, I'll always watch his movies. He's always fun to watch. The ending really scared me and freaked me out. That concept of being eaten by a spider, very frightening. 
I knew about this part of the movie, this scene, before I saw the movie because it was referenced in Beetlejuice and other parodies. But I do want to talk about the film's most famous scene, which is the Help Me scene, where the detective and Francois finally find the fly that went through the teleportation with uh, Andre, and they see that it has Andre's head and has his voice as well, and it starts screaming, Help Me, as it's trapped in a spider web, and I know people make fun of that scene today, but if you really think about it, that scene is creepy as fuck. Because imagine seeing your brother as a fly trapped in a spider's web. That would be fucking traumatizing. Yes. And even the implication that a part of Andre's consciousness is in that fly. So imagine if you were a fly trapped in a spider's web. That is a creepy-ass scene. I know people kind of say, oh, it's cheesy and it's silly, and it is to a certain extent, but if you really think about it, that is fucking terrifying. Yeah, I mean, the close-up of the spite, the close-ups of the spider are pretty horrifying uh, in and of themselves, and, I mean, you know, the, sp the fly has on both Andre's head and his arm, and, you know, it's, it's pretty gruesome to think about uh, that the spider is basically just going to rip him apart and devour him. Uh, and I like to think of it like, uh, you know, when Andre was transformed, his he got some of the flies, you know, baser instincts in his head that were starting to take over. So, with the fly, it was probably the reverse. The fly got his human, like, intellect or part of it, and then that started to take over the fly's mentality, you know? Yeah. So, it's like, he realizes fully what's happening, and I mean, it's just, it's a pretty gruesome scene. Now, I mentioned before how I read the short story that this movie is based on, and again, the film is really true to the story, but it does expand upon things, because the story was only about, like, maybe 15 pages long, uh, but one thing in the short story that they leave out of the movie that I thought was interesting is, you know how in the movie he experiments... He tries the first live experiment on a cat, and the cat just disappears, but you still hear it's, like, meowing. Yeah. Um, in the short story, the same thing happened, but apparently you're supposed to assume that some of the cat's atoms were still lingering, because in the short story, he doesn't just become part fly, but also kind of becomes part cat as well. And it's a really grotesque look in the way it's described in the story. But in the movie, it's just, they make it a little simpler, and it's just him with a fly head. Yeah. Uh, but what do you think that would have been like if they tried to incorporate cat features into it? I think that would have been quite a sight to behold. Uh, you know, that reminds me, I was reading in the trivia section on IMDb for this movie, apparently David Hedison suggested that they kind of show Andre's transformation in different phases, but uh, the filmmakers of the studio didn't want to do that because that was too costly and time-consuming, but that idea was later used for David Cronenberg's remake of The Fly. Oh yeah. Now, both this movie and the short story that it's based on, I think, owe a lot to Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. I mean, both movies are about what happens when man fucks around with nature and messes with forces that he's really not meant to mess with. And ultimately, both stories are about what happens when man tries to emulate God. Uh, what do you think of, like, the Frankenstein comparison? I think it's appropriate. Yeah. And also, given that this movie and the short story came out, like, right at the beginning of the Cold War era, there was a lot of paranoia about what nuclear radiation can do and what were scientists doing with splitting the atom, and, like, you could definitely see that reflected in this movie. Yeah, it was definitely a time when I think science was somewhat feared. Yeah. You know, about what scientists could possibly do to tamper with things that they shouldn't be tampering with. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it was definitely, as you said, it was a very paranoid time. Yeah. It was, uh, you know, a time... It was The 50s were really the decade of science run amok films. You know, you had them, you had... Uh, the original Godzilla. The original Godzilla, and of course The Fly. You know, you had... 
all these kind of different, as I said, science, run amok films. Uh, because in, it was reflecting real life, I guess. Real life's paranoia of science at the time. Any closing thoughts on The Fly? Yeah, I, th I think it's a classic, and I think it's definitely worth checking out if you haven't seen it. And if you have seen it, you know, maybe give it a rewatch. Especially if you're a science fiction or horror film fan, or a fan of, you know, science run amok films, as I said before. If you're a Vincent Price aficionado, you should definitely check this out. Uh, yeah, I love the original The Fly. I think it's underrated, honestly, yeah. because I think it definitely got overshadowed by the David Cronenberg yes. remake. And yeah, I, I think so, too. I feel like a lot of people do kind of make fun of this movie, and I think it's a much better film than its reputation would lead you to believe. Now, The Fly did have two sequels, Return of the Fly and Curse of the Fly, and then it had the David Cronenberg remake that we just mentioned, and then the remake had a sequel to it called The Fly 2. Um... And we're going to be reviewing the sequels very soon. The Fly has also been parodied many times throughout pop culture. Even the Help Me scene has been spoofed many times. Actually, I remember it was spoofed in fucking Leprechaun 4 when Dr. Mittenham became that, like, part spider, oh, part yeah. scorpion That's thing. Right. When he gets frozen, he's like, Help me! Help me! It's like, okay, that was... Yeah, that was definitely a Fly parody, and I know it's been parodied many other times. But yeah, that was our review on The Fly, and our next movie review will be on Return of the Fly.